Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is reversible reactions. Reversible reactions are reversible. You can tell the difference between them and regular reactions on paper by checking the arrow. Regular reactions just have a left to right arrow. Reversible reactions have this cool looking double arrow. Now you might be thinking, well then, the reaction really could occur either way. Reactants and products are not are the same thing. Well, just for notation purposes, reactants are on this side still, and products are still on this side. Now, moving on. Leave a reversible reaction in a jar for long enough, and it'll reach a state called equilibrium. That's when the forward rate of reaction is the same as the reverse rate. But, as a result, all of the amounts, both products and reactants, will remain constant. Le Chatelier, French guy, came up with this thing called Le Chatelier's Principle, which deals with the changes in amounts of these things and what that does to the reaction. An increase in concentration will force the reaction away from that increase. Like, say, back up here. If we suddenly dumped a whole load of H2 on our reaction, it would shift away from the increase, creating more H2O2. Next is heat. Heat depends on your reaction. You can basically write it as part of your reaction. Let's say this reaction was exothermic, meaning heat came out of it. You could write in heat as a product. So if you increase the heat, it would shift away from the increase, just referring back to concentration again, like this. For simplicity's sake, we'll write it out. If a reaction is exothermic and you add heat, then it will shift towards the reactants. If the reaction is endothermic and you add heat, then it will shift toward the products. Next up is pressure. Pressure affects gases only. Back at Back up here, let's say that all of these are gases, which is pretty likely, considering this particular reaction. Increasing pressure will affect the side with the most moles of gas. This one has two moles of gas, one mole of H2 and one mole of O2. This side has only one. If you increase the pressure, it'll shift away from the side with the most moles of gas, this one. So it'll create a lot of H2O2. Last is the catalyst. Catalysts affect both forward and reverse reactions, in the same way, so no net effect. To recap, reversible reactions are reactions that can occur both ways. They're reversible. They'll have this cool double arrow thing. Equilibrium is a state that those reactions will work, reach eventually. That's when the forward rate is the same as the reverse rate, but the amounts of your products and reactants remain constant. The Chatelier's principle deals with changes in this equilibrium. An increase in concentration will shift your reaction away from the increase. An increase in heat for exothermic reactions, we'll move towards the reactants. For endothermic reactions, towards the products. An increase in pressure will affect gases only. Look for the side with the most gases, and that's the side it'll increase on, and therefore move the reaction away from. Catalysts have no effect. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.